Hey everyone. Um, so we're working on the dart as well as the Falcon. You can see in the background. Um, don't judge me for how the jack stands are. I couldn't get under it far enough with the jack because of how low it was sitting. And I just sit it like that. New tires will be on it tomorrow. Um, but this thing, it's actually really solid. I looked under it. I did not get under it. I looked under it yesterday. Frame's nice. Floor seems to be nice. But it is filthy. It's disgusting inside. This is after we've already cleaned a whole bunch of the stuff up. So obviously had mice in there. Um, headliner's bad. Broken glass everywhere. We did pull the windshield out. And uh, been working on cleaning the back window up. Uh, as you can see. Still really excited about this car. It does have a sure grip in it. According to the build sheet, it's like a 323. Um, disc brakes, Kelsey Hayes, four piston caliper. So I pulled the headlights out. I mean, it's amazing how much better a car will look just taking all the broken stuff off. Um, I'm still so excited about this car. And it's gonna actually, I think it's gonna clean up pretty good. Uh, my friend Neil, he's been pounding out the original door. Uh, so we'll have all white panels on there. Um, this door is going to be a little bit, you know, have dents and waves in it, which is fine. Uh, just because I'm going to kind of keep the car rough for a little while and just drive it and enjoy it. Uh, probably paint the roof black, even though it was originally a vinyl top car. Uh, but really, this car is complete. It's not bad. Has pedal dress up, like I said before. Thumb wheel radio that you can't hardly see. Um, Real 340 automatic. It is a P code LM swinger. So the LM right here, that's Dart Swinger 23. P is 340. 9 is uh, 69. B is uh, um, Hamtramck, I believe. Um, but anyway, it's going to come together. We're going to keep cleaning it. It's really kind of muddy outside. Um, so we're just kind of dealing with the weather and everything. And then, like I said, been working on the Falcon as well. Falcon's coming along great. There's a video of it as well being made. Uh, and so I'm not sure what will come first, the Dart or the Falcon as far as videos, but working on both of them simultaneously. So, and then this week, uh, I'm on my way to Vegas, so I won't be able to do much this weekend or this week, honestly. Uh, so they're gonna just kind of sit. Um, but anyway, I'll catch up with some more stuff here shortly Okay, everybody So as you know, this is one of the things I get most excited about It's finding the documentation This seat has been reupholstered as has the front one um, You can see this this is not a factory thing. This would have been all vinyl as far as I'm aware I did not expect to find a build sheet and look at that thing right there Seriously, that is one of my very most favorite things about these cars is documentation. So now I've just got to really carefully pull that out and put it somewhere very safe. Hey everybody, I finally get to play with the dart for a minute today. Um, as I mentioned before, I have the original white door for the car, but it was kind of mangled. Um, my friend popped it out the best he could without damaging the paint. And you know, it's not perfect, but it's perfect for this car. Because like I've said, I just want to enjoy this car and just have fun with it. I want something I can drive and just play with. And this is perfect for that. So I'm super excited. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hurry and get that replaced today. And then I've got a whole bunch of other parts. Taxes came back and it all went to this white project. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And then I'll show you some stuff a little bit later. So the doors changed. As you can see, it's just a bare door, and I did that mainly because it's easier to manage the door with one person if it's lighter and makes it way lighter. 
than the full door. Um, so I'm gonna take that full door now, sit it up on my little bench there and completely disassemble it and then uh, reassemble this door. But you know, like I said, even though it's dented up and everything, it looks way better all white than having that other door on there. So, and then as far as the roof goes, it was an original black vinyl top car, but for now, I think I'm just gonna sand it down really nice and just put some black paint on it. Uh, the vinyl tops are really expensive and I just don't know if I have the uh, talent to install one and I would hate to waste like between five and 600 bucks uh, on that, so. I'm just going to paint it. Should look good. Okay, so I've got the white door on. It's all loaded and everything now. Everything works. Um, actually pretty impressed. Just so you guys are aware, if you haven't ever done one of those windows, they are a pain in the butt. You actually have to pull the wing window and everything out to do it. Uh, as you probably know, if you followed before, this window is broke out, so I'm getting ready to put one in it and had to pull the whole wing window, everything out. Got the boy involved. He's been helping. Um, really kind of a pain, but it'll be worth it in the end when I have all windows. Uh, also doing the felts while I'm doing it, which are these little pieces here, uh, should make it way nicer. Like I showed you, these ones are bad, and I think that's why it rusts down down low is just because the felt was bad and the water just went down. I mean, there's no seal at all. So uh, on the other door, I did the felt after I put the window in. I think I'm gonna try to put the felt in first this time, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's really not that complicated with the window in, so I may just do that. Uh, anyway, well, I'm gonna get back to work Okay, so this door is now put together. Window goes up and down good, everything. The inside's all put together. So we're cleaning out the trunk and we're gonna clean out the engine bay. We're gonna vacuum it and everything. Uh, and then I'm going to take this to the car wash on Saturday and spray it really good. I'm really excited. I've got this product called Super Clean and I'm gonna try it out and uh, Hope that it works. This grime has been on here for at least 20 years and it will be fun to see it disappear. Um, with any luck on Saturday, we are going to have this thing running. Um, so I think I'm going to put coolant in it real fast just to see if it holds it and make sure that uh, you know there's not a problem there. So uh, bear with me for a minute. So I'm gonna use this uh, coolant here. Now just a tip for a lot of people that don't realize it. So this is full strength. And full strength is about $3 more per gallon than the 50-50. So you can turn this into two gallons. So basically you're getting two gallons of coolant for $3 more than if you buy the 50-50. So I always recommend just getting the full strength. Um, then if you don't use it all, then you still have some for later. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and see if it holds anything or if it just leaks right out. If it leaks out, then we've got a problem already and we'll have to figure that out. But I'm hopeful. Reservoir is full. By reservoir, I mean radiator. Not 
seeing anything down this side. I'm not seeing anything down this side, so that's good news. Those hoses are hard as a rock, so definitely before I actually start driving it, it's gonna need some love. actually comes with the uh, dipstick. It's kind of hard to find the hole again. And probably the best thing to do with that is just lightly take like a two by four and sit it on there and just lightly tap it with a, a hammer or something just to get it to go back in that boss. So. Still not seeing any coolant down on the ground, so I'm happy. And it does turn. I did turn it just a little bit the other day, and I've got everything. I want to do it right. I'm going to prime it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is drain the oil, put all fresh oil in. I'm going to take the valve covers off so I can pour some on the valve train. Um, going to tap each one of them, make sure that none of the valves are stuck. Um, but we're going to go over all of that on Saturday when I do it. I'm um, still waiting on just a couple of parts to come in. It's Thursday night now. So, but I am really excited and I'm hoping with any luck, like I said, to have this thing running and driving by my birthday, uh, which is April 27. But between now and then, I may be going to the Portland International Raceway for the big swap meet. That's next weekend. Um, and then I may be working the swap meet in Van Nuys, California, April 23rd and 24th. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff possibly on the agenda. Um, and then just all sorts of other little things in between. But it's going to be awesome. I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited about all the stuff I have planned for you guys. Uh, to share with you guys anyway. So... Well, I'm going to get back at doing a couple things, and we'll catch up when I start doing some work. So another good idea when you're going to spray the whole engine compartment out is to go through and vacuum it all. Get like all of this kind of stuff out, because all that does is just turn into debris and mud. Gets all over the place when you're cleaning. So if you vacuum it out, uh, it just helps a ton. Um, luckily, luckily I have the little here. He really enjoys cleaning, so he, uh, he does all that stuff for me. Um, but like I said, it just, just helps out a ton when you're cleaning it all up. I need to get that pad out, uh, cause that's just going to be a big mess. But overall, I really cannot believe how clean this car is as far as rust. There's really not that much. Hey everybody, pretty excited about today. We're gonna go get the engine cleaned up uh, and going to hopefully get it running. Uh, we're gonna use some super clean products like I mentioned before. I'm really excited to try these out and see how they work on the engine for degreaser as well as on the wheels. I'm not sure what they're gonna do on the wheels yet, but we'll find out. Um, anyway, we're gonna get started here shortly. Okay, so the Dart is loaded up and ready to go. I'll tell you what, this car is just such a cool looking little car. Oh man, cannot wait to drive this. So hopefully after we get it all cleaned up, today we can get it running. I don't think we'll go driving. There are no brakes, all unchecked and 
goes right to the floor didn't do anything so but as long as i can fire it up i will be pretty darn excited uh so anyway we're going to head into town and go to the car wash okay so we're here at the car wash and i'm going to uh get the engine sprayed and the tires i'm not going to wash the rest of the car maybe just the lower half because i don't want to get the interior completely saturated um so i've got cardboard box to use as a windshield basically um but first things first i'm going to uh get the degreaser the super clean brand degreaser sprayed on the engine and let it soak for a second uh while i spray the tires and whatnot off so so i've got the super clean basically they say just spray it on cover everything and let it dissolve the grease so we're gonna put a nice healthy healthy coat on here basically cover everything because as you can see this engine's pretty nasty had all this stuff on it plus it's been sitting for you know over 20 years so it'll be be really nice if it pulls all this grease off and you can actually see the color of the engine plus it's even nicer when you don't have to get your hands all covered in grease almost done a hole 344 barrel and see how much it already just cleans that up so that's a good sign Okay, so the engine is soaking in the degreaser, and I can tell you already by the inner fenders, it looks like it's doing an awesome job. Um, now I'm gonna hurry and just show you guys the tire cleaner, um, or the wheel cleaner. And I already tested one. Now this is oxidization, so it's not gonna do anything with the oxidization. But it does seem to work really good about getting like all the blue off of the fresh tires and just the clean tires. Unfortunately, this is kind of a poor example of what the wheel cleaner does because they are brand new tires and that's not wheel dust. Um, but it still helps and um, it does say to spray the tire down first and then with cool water, then with the wheel cleaner, let it sit for 30 seconds and then uh, spray it off. Okay, so I've let the tires soak. Um, this should just spray right off basically and you can see it's not even high pressure and the blue is coming off. Those white letters sure do look nice. Okay, so it's been soaking for about, oh, 10 minutes. So I'm gonna spray it down. We'll see what happens.
Well, I have to say, I am actually really impressed. I mean, look how white those inner fender wells are again. That was super satisfying to watch that grease fly. There's still some, but you know what? It is way cleaner and a lot easier to work on now. Awesome, super clean. I highly recommend it. Okay, so we're gonna start the actual work on the car. Um, I did remove the air filter assembly just so we can kind of look at it. First thing, like I said, I'm gonna drop the oil, uh, put new oil in it. We're gonna pull the filter or the valve covers um, and just start there. I'm doing electronic ignition, so I'm gonna remove the aftermarket vintage uh, spark add-on thing. Um, and then I do wanna remove the cruise control. It's just kind of, I don't know, it looks ugly. Um, and then I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this on or not. Whether I keep it on or don't, I will keep it just for fun. It is incomplete, so it's missing a couple pieces. So really there's no point having it on there um, other than it just kind of looks unique and cool. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I've got the boy helping, my dad's around. He's gonna help a little bit and then Sam from Old School Cars, or Old School Rides is gonna be out here. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get going. So really it's been a while since I've worked on A-bodies and uh, I'm six foot six and I forgot one of the things you really need to do if you're tall is remove this because uh, it will get you and it hurts. So I've got the dart up on jack stands with the jack under it. And very first thing I'm gonna say, I know this is not the correct way to do it because I'm not on pavement or concrete and et cetera, et cetera. I understand that, I don't recommend doing it, but at this point, this is the only real option that I have. Um, so that's why I left the jack under it as well. You notice I did put stuff underneath the jack stands. There's an aluminum pad on that side and wood on the other side. I shook it, it feels safe, so. I'm gonna go ahead and get under it just to change the oil. Um, so hopefully I'm safe. Um, but anyway, like I said, I don't recommend it. Uh, a couple other things I just wanna note real fast while we're playing. So you'll notice this 340 is red. And from some research that I've done um, in 1969 only and on the 340s only, it seems there's not really a right color or a wrong color um, because they've been seen in survivor cars, all original with turquoise, blue, orange, or red. And there's not really any way to prove one way or another which one it was from the factory. Uh, this one is currently red and I don't see anything up here that says that it's been any other color. And uh, let me go backwards a little bit. Um, this is not the numbers matching engine or the original engine, but the top end is all supposed to be the original top end and the block was just replaced with a warranty block. And so it appears to me that it's been red forever, but again, there's not really any way to prove one way or the other what color it was. However, this is a late build car and Everybody I spoke to has said that it was only the early ones that were red. So I don't really know. Um, another thing that I just kind of want to show real quick, there's a, a little thing on the um, K-frames of the 340 cars that was welded on. And it's this little washer. You can kind of see it right. Yeah, it's hard to see. But you can kind of see it welded on right there. Now, I don't understand, and from what I know, nobody really understands why they did that on the 340s, but there it is. And I believe it was on pretty much all 340 cars. Uh, but the K-frame looks identical to just a 318 one. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get this oil dropped now, get fresh oil in there. Uh, I'm gonna pull the valve covers when I put fresh oil in so I can just put some oil on there. And we're gonna actually prime it and do it all right. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that so that uh, uh, anyone that wants to know knows. Because um, pretty much any engine that's set for a 
significant amount of time really should be done this way so you don't ruin it by cranking it over with no oil. So I didn't get a chance to do what I wanted to yesterday as far as getting it running. Um, had some other things come up. And so here I am going to do it today. So first things first, uh, I've got to pull the distributor cap and the wires just basically to get them out of the way. But also I want to make sure that it's at TDC, which stands for top dead center. Um, and then uh, I'm going to pull the valve covers off, put the oil in, pull the distributor, and we're gonna go ahead and get it primed. Um, the reason you wanna make sure it's at top dead center is because you have to pull the gear out from underneath the distributor um, and then you use a special tool and a drill and prime the uh, oil system. And as I do that, I'll explain it. Um, right now, I'm just gonna get prepared to do that. So uh, uh, just hang out with me. So like I said, I'm gonna pull the wires i may pull the plugs i'm not sure i'm going to anyway just because i have new ones um but i'm just not sure if i'm gonna do it right now it definitely makes it easier to turn over by hand or even with a ratchet if there's no plugs because then you know there's no compression and wow the cap is loose knees over It's kind of cool. These are the original valve covers and the original air filter assembly. And uh, I bought some cool direct connection and Milodon ones, or Mylodon, and wasn't sure which ones I was gonna use. And everybody keeps telling me, just use these factory ones. And they're right. Even though I'm a day two guy and I prefer the day two stuff, this thing looks so cool with factory valve covers and air filter. Or this is just going to be a fun one that I'm just going to drive, leave stock. I may as well just leave it stock. So, this is all garbage. So away it goes. I'll probably trip over it later now though. So watch the blooper reel. Um, so, and honestly, I already turned it so it's at TDC. And it's kind of hard to see on camera, so I'm just going to explain it. There's a notch down here on the dampener. And you put that, and then you want to make sure the distributor, the rotor is pointing forward, um, which it is. And then as you turn it, the rotor is going to turn, etc. But right now I'm not going to turn it. I've just got it all set up. So when I pull that out, I can prime it. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the valve covers off. Before I actually start driving this car, I've got to go through and do all the hoses and everything too. Because these things are definitely... Definitely not great. Oh, just broke that one. That was the vacuum advance hose. And for now, just to get it started, I'm probably gonna leave the points in it just due to time. But I do have, like I said, everything to put electronic ignition in it. So. And let's see. So another cool thing about like the factory valve covers so they have all the stuff for the wires and everything to be ran, and so they actually look really clean. I should just unhook the uh, should just unhook the alternator so that this wire is completely out of the way, but I think I'll be okay. I did spray it off really good, cleaned it, but you still, when you're getting ready to pull the valve covers, you just want to be kind of careful and make sure you don't drop debris down in the engine, um, such as like rocks or dirt, just basically anything. Okay, so this one's coming off. Set this out of the way. I'm actually really impressed by how clean the inside of this engine is. Like even the inside of the valve cover didn't have like all the kind of carbon nasty buildup in it.
I mean, you can see kind of maybe in the camera, pretty clean in there. Okay, now pull the distributor. Um, if I can get to it. Might have to use a wrench, not a socket, but we'll see if I can fit this back there with a wobble and extension. No, well, maybe. No, looks like it's gonna be a wrench. Give me just a second. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these. This is a wrench specifically for doing distributors. Just kind of reaches down there, allows you to get right on the bolt. When they're tight, it's it's kind of tough though. But oh, there we go. And usually, if you're just going to adjust the timing, you just loosen this up a little bit. But since we've got to pull it all the way out, uh, you're going to take that bolt all the way out. So it's a half inch and you can get those tools. I believe you can get them at like Harbor Freight. I know you can get them at O'Reilly's and stuff or you can just special order them online. So here's the little clamp for the distributor. Now, like I said, um, and I don't know if you can see it in the camera, I've got it set at top dead center. So we know that this right now with how the uh, line is down here um, on the dampener, and again, I wish I could show you, but there's really not a good way to see it. Um, where that's at and then that's at, once we pull the timing gear, or not the timing gear, the uh, cam gear out of there, it comes out at an angle. So we're gonna have to put it back in at that same angle when the crank is lined up right where it's at. That way we'll be able to set the timing exactly how it is. So and then before I pull this, distributor out. I still need to undo this wire and I think I think that's everything and then should be good to go. Really, this seems complicated. Um, it's funny, my dad and I were just actually talking about this today, how certain things just seem overwhelming. But r the reality of it is, once you start doing it, you just start working, it's really not that hard. A lot of it is just, you know, paying attention and just literally just doing it. So, okay, so same thing like with the uh, valve covers, when you pull it off, you wanna just kinda make sure it's clean. Same thing back by the distributor. You wanna make sure there's no debris back there uh, that's gonna fall down into the engine. Um, in this case, I am going to do an oil flush. So this first oil that I'm putting in, this is gonna be to prime it. We'll start it up and let it get warm and everything, maybe a couple times. And then I'm just gonna drain it and put fresh oil with a new filter on it again. This is basically just to clean it up, to prime it, and make sure everything's in good order, uh, which is just a safe thing to do on any engine that sit for a long time. And re in reality, just doing an oil flush on an engine after you've driven it, you know, 40, 50,000 miles is not a bad idea. Uh, you can even put like a quart of diesel or a quart of transmission fluid in there just to help because they kind of have like a detergent to them and that will help bring carbon and whatnot out. But, 
And like I said, this engine, I am actually super impressed with how clean it is inside. It is, and it's not bad at all. So. I trip on it and there is just some debris back here so I'm just gonna spray it down with some brake cleaner and then I'm gonna wipe it down with a towel just because I don't I don't want that stuff falling into the engine and I do have like gloves because you don't want to get that stuff on your skin. However, I left them at the storage unit on accident. So, kind of a bonehead mistake on my part. Okay, so distributor's out. Now let's see if we can get this gear to come out. Sometimes they're real pain. Okay, so I got to turn out. Now all the question is how to get out of the hole. So I'm gonna try a little trick and I'm gonna show you how to magnetize your screwdriver um, and see if that will help. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, grab a couple things and we'll get that set up. Okay, so this is kind of a cool little trick um, and I'm sure a lot of you know it, but maybe not everybody. So basically you take a piece of wire, nothing special, just wire. You put it on the screwdriver. Uh, first off, you wanna strip the ends of the wire so that you've got the bare metal. Then you're going to coil it around. Like so. Hopefully I coiled it enough. But as you can see, screwdriver is not magnetic. So all you do is just spark it like two times. And then this should be, well, you can see it's moving it, but it's not enough to pick that vice grip up. But hopefully it's enough to pick that gear up out of the, uh, out of the engine. So let's find out. If not, then we'll have to find something else out. But as you can see, it does make your screwdriver a magnet. So with like small screws and stuff like that, it definitely will help if you need it to. So down in that hole is the gear that I'm talking about. And I'm gonna try to get it out with this newly magnetized screwdriver without dropping anything. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the uh, screwdriver is magnetized enough. Which it's not. So I'm going to have to go find another magnet and pull it out. Which is kind of expected. Um, I just wanted to try it. And like I said, it's just kind of cool to know that you can do that if you need to uh, for smaller things. So I got the gear out. Um, we used these snap ring pliers here. And uh, just had to sit there and wiggle with it. Wiggle it, play with it until it came out. And now I'm going to put oil in it and start... Uh, pumping the oil through the engine, turn it a quarter revolution or quarter rotation, pump it again, and just continue doing that at least two whole rotations. So we're gonna get started on that. Okay, so like I said, I'm actually gonna pour some, hopefully without making a mess, right across the uh, rockers. 
because I just want to try to get as much stuff lubed. Oh, I just made a big mess. So that's awesome. Made another big mess. In the future, I will do this with the valve covers on, I think. Mainly I just wanted to do this so that there was already oil on both sides just to kind of help and I wanted to run it front to back. You know there's certain engines if you do this then you're like you know if you're going to start them after a while you don't really care. Like if it's just a base 318 or something, but this being an actual 340, anybody in the Mopar world and even a lot of people not know that the 340s are are not all over the place and they were awesome little engines. So I would hate to screw it up just off of ignorance. Okay, so this is the tool I'm going to use. This is actually a Mopar tool. And as you can see, it has the hex on the side or bottom, same as the timing gear here. And basically, you just put a drill on it. Which I've got right here. And then you're going to put it down in there and you're going to turn it clockwise. I'm not sure if it's reaching. Might have to undo some bracketry. Okay, so it's actually pumping. I don't know if you can see in the through the camera, but there are actually air bubbles coming through some of these, the top of the uh, lifters right here, or sorry, through the lifters up through the push rods into the um, rockers. And so I'm not like I said, I'm not sure if you can see it, but okay. Now I'm gonna turn it quarter. Okay, so the oil is primed, new plugs in, new wires, new cap. Like I said, I 
I'm going to just start it with the points because I don't have the time at this moment to put the electronic ignition in, but that will come probably in the next video. Um, valve covers are back on. You notice I used the old gaskets. This is just temporary. I just want to get it fired up and see how it runs. And uh, then there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that comes in the next video. Um, but anyway, Sam's been helping. Right now, I've got to get the fuel line unhooked from the fuel pump because we absolutely do not want to suck any old fuel from the tank. I do have a brand new tank for it. Uh, so I'm going to replace that also in the next video. Lots of stuff coming um, in the future for this car. Uh, anyway, so we're going to hurry and get the fuel system addressed for our temporary use. And then uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, get it fired up. I really want to hear it run in the next hour or so. Okay, everybody. Fuel line has been changed. I just put the new battery in. I bumped it over right there just to see if it's going to crank, and it does. Uh, looks like there was some old fuel in the fuel pump, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just fire it up anyway. I've got the line run over here to my awesome auxiliary fuel tank, uh, but I'm really excited. We're really close. We're just changing the ignition switch and then uh, firing this thing up. Hopefully, fingers are crossed. Um, anyway, we'll get it videoed as we go. Okay, so we're gonna crank it over. Got some carb cleaner. We're gonna try to fire it up. I'm excited. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I did not check the carburetor first and see if it was gummed up. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 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 There's no spark. Okay, I guess we gotta play with it a little bit more. Well, everybody, I guess I'm gonna have to call it a day. Um, have a family party I have to get to, and the points are bad. Instead of going get new points and put more money and all that stuff in it, I'm gonna replace the coil. And since I have this brand new Mopar electronic ignition kit right here, which is really pretty. Look at that beauty. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do what should be done anyway and put the electronic ignition in. Now I'll just make the car run a lot better regardless. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna try to get that done tomorrow so I can finish up this video. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, so I really was planning on having this car running this episode. Uh, but there's been a couple changes in my plans. Um, one is the weather, which I have no control over. It got really nasty today and tomorrow. And I am going to be leaving to go to Portland for the uh, big swap me there at PIR. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I'm not going to be a vendor this time. I'm just going to walk around and enjoy myself, meet some people, hopefully pick up some cool stuff. And then I'm also going to hang out at Wildcat Mopars there in Sandy, Oregon. 
if you haven't ever been there, I highly recommend it. Uh, awesome place to go check out. Great people. Vanessa, Ed, Randy, they're all awesome people. Uh, tons of cool cars. Their prices are fair. And I'm, it's just a fun place. Uh, I'm hoping to do a video while I'm there. I plan to. Um, so you'll see that. Uh, the other thing is on the Dart, I have the complete uh, and it's brand new Mopar electronic ignition conversion kit. Um, and I was fully intended to use that. But then I remembered I also have a brand new MSD 6AL uh, box. Still in the box. Never, never been used or anything. I actually bought it for Red, uh, the truck. But I'm thinking I might use it on that car. Maybe you guys give me your input on what I should do since I'm not going to be able to touch it for about a week anyway. Um, you know, would you do the just the standard, the orange box Mopar ignition or would you go with the MSD? Uh, right now, the car is currently the factory points and, you know, I'm, I don't want to do that. I just want to do something good. Um, trying to think of what else. Uh, anyway... Guys, I'm so excited about this car, and also I just want to say thank you guys and gals so much for watching, supporting me, your comments, all of that stuff. I really enjoy it. Um, if you haven't hit subscribe, please, please do so. It helps me. And also hit that like button. That really helps me as well. There's tons of cool stuff coming up. Uh, I just actually booked rooms and a swap meet spot at Spring Fling in Van Nuys, California, April 23rd and 24th, I believe. So I will be down there as a vendor uh, taking a ton of stuff, a whole bunch of car stuff, Mopar related, as well as a bunch of other stuff like road signs and just random things that you can hang up in your garage or your shop uh, or just do whatever you want. Just kind of cool random stuff. Um, and I look forward to meeting some of you guys and gals down there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't ever been to this particular show or swap meet, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then also, I want to say thank you to Super Clean. Um, their product is awesome. I recommend it. It's really good stuff. Uh, as you've seen in this very video, the difference, just putting degreaser on it and spraying it down. It wasn't even hot water and soap. It was just putting the degreaser on, letting it sit for a little bit, and spraying it all down. Worked phenomenal. I look forward to using their product more. Um, and uh, anyway, thanks again for everything, guys, and uh, have a wonderful day and wonderful week.